For the artist and the creative professional, a good computer is an essential foundational tool. And while we're all excited to see how Apple's new Mac Studio will fit the bill, I wanted to give a last hurrah of a look at the new MacBook Pro. Now, in the world of tech YouTube, we've done our benchmarks and tried out what's new to tell you how it is. And the new MacBook Pro has impressed just about all of us. But what about the types of people who they are made for? What is the MacBook Pro like in the real world? The results might surprise you. They surprised me. This is Andrew Muller. He's a musician friend of mine who goes by the name Viola Bloom. Viola Bloom. Viola Bloom. Viola Bloom. He's been growing in music production for a number of years now, accumulating a large array of cool synths and effect mabobs that plug into his 2015 MacBook Pro, glowing logo and all. I mean, I can pull up a song file. Software-wise, music producers are spoiled for choice with their digital audio workstation software. And Andrew's choice when writing and producing tunes is Reason. The reason I like Reason is that you can build like very complicated instruments and it's really cool. It's based on more of an analog look. Like even when you go into it, you see these little rack units that you would normally see if you went into like a million dollar studio and you can turn them around and see the wiring and you can rewire them. You could do all this stuff. Using something like Ableton is like more appropriate, but I hate using Ableton like to write music with. Yeah, because this is a song I wrote in the summer. I'm just starting to load it now. But then once you go to play it, it's like it's gonna stutter a ton. For us, a slow computer is a bit of a nuisance, but for Andrew, it can really cramp his creative flow. For audio, buffer size is like very important. So you can see like we have a certain amount of samples here and it tells us what our latency is. So like this song, for example, will not play unless I have this set to 2000 samples. So this is like, because this is what you have to do, is you have to keep jumping up your buffer size every time your project gets bigger, and now you can touch the project less, because you're like, oh, well, I want to record some instruments. It starts to create a mess. So it's like, you, okay, well, I'm just going to increase the buffer size. <laughs> it's like a very long delay. It's literally impossible because you like your brain gets confused because you hear it a second later. It's just like you feel like an idiot. So can we make Andrew's life a little better? This new MacBook Pro with an M1 Pro processor is about four times faster than his fourth gen Intel Core i7 laptop. And so I want to give it to him to see if such an upgrade actually makes any difference. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side, what about one of our video editors, like Hoffman, whom you might recognize? He's an editor here at LMG who occasionally takes photos for merch on LTTstore.com, just like me with their plaid flannel. In the Edit Den, he uses a massive, powerful desktop PC, Threadripper 3090 and all. It's just so fast, I don't really have to care about <laughs> His workstation is very powerful and very big, so I want to see how much an M1 Max powered MacBook Pro with 24 cores compares. What the heck are you doing? Well, we're replacing your desktop, heavy and hot, with a new MacBook Pro. We're going to see if it's just as fast. Is it going to be faster than mine? Well, you're going to tell me. You know this is what you want. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> The goal with this video is to get an idea of what it would be like were someone to add one of these MacBook Pros into their workflow. So we're going to need a bit of time, at least over a week, to let them get their hands dirty. So what do I do in the meantime? You should probably read the sponsor thing. Right. And it's Zoho CRM. For those of you in business sales, marketing, and customer service, Zoho CRM offers a wide-ranging solution to managing your customer relationships. They've got an intuitive UI with simple navigation a built-in design studio for tailoring the service to your needs, and AI predictions to help provide insights and understand your customers' needs. With their flexible contracts and transparent pricing, they can grow with you without snowballing costs. Better still, get 50% off your annual subscription when you use code ZCRM50 with the link in the description below.
Many of the new features introduced in the MacBook Pro are extremely handy, especially in Hoffman's case. That SD card reader, almost worth the price of entry alone. Except for the fact that you also get that fabulous XDR display. The screen, it's just so nice. I, I can trust the screen. I actually edit photos on the screen all the time for LTT Store. The keyboard is just so nice. It's so tactile. It's exactly what I wanted. At his desk, Hoffman edits high-quality, high-bitrate MAC address footage. Now, we do have a server to edit footage off of. However, it and Macs have a bit of a fickle relationship, so Hoffman's editing locally. So how does the MacBook compare to the Threadripper? There are times when the transcode is just a little bit slower. For example, it would be like seven minutes to transcode something on the Threadripper versus 12 minutes on the MacBook Pro. But I just look at it and, you know, try to listen to the fan and I rarely hear the fan sometimes. I mean, it is a bit of a big difference, to seven, 12 minutes to 7 minutes. It's pretty rough, I would say, but yeah. the time difference is like a couple minutes. It's not exactly close, but it's not exactly far. It just it surprises me every time is that I can carry such a powerful computer with me <laughs> in, in such like a small form factor. And I look at my Threadripper machine, it's like big and bulky. So, back to Andrew. The issue for him was managing the buffer in Reason. To hear his multi-layered song, he needed a big buffer, which meant he can't play along with it. So, is the new Mac any better? Like, my old computer, once a song got bigger, I would have to be up to like 2,000 samples, which is like, it's very hard to record. <laughs> <laughs> So that's not too bad for only 512 samples. Like I was expecting it to like, like I was at yeah, 2000, cool. well, so I'm gonna go up more samples. Your sample rate. <laughs> no, it's. So it actually just got worse when I changed it to 1000 samples for some reason. What? Yeah, maybe maybe that's what I need to experiment with is lower. Like my, okay, D, my DSP is at like max. That's very weird, right? It's getting worse and worse and worse. I think it'll get better now at 4000. And like the new MacBook, I opened up a song and like immediately it wouldn't play until I had it at 4,000 samples. <laughs> so how did you feel when the performance was not as good? Oh man, that was so disappointing. <laughs> it felt awful. It was like, oh, did I make a huge mistake here? Like, it made me feel like I was an early adopter. It shows that the problem here is the software. In the digital audio workstation space, Reason is known for being a little behind. Their latest update, 12, now supports HD graphics for Retina screens. Andrew, however, uses version 11. And while it should run on M1 through Rosetta, something is clearly getting lost in translation. And native M1 support looks a long way off, despite the M1 being a part of the system requirements. So, uh, are you gonna buy a MacBook? I'm, yeah, I bought a MacBook and it just shipped last night. Oh, you just night, got it. And it just shipped last night and I got a UPS sticker on my door and I went and picked it up just before you, uh, this interview. So you still went and got one anyway. I still, I still got it anyways, yeah. Uh, oh, you got a space gray one. It's space gray, what can I say? For me, I was motivated to just because my computer was getting slow and, and while well, I'm trying to work on these projects and I got 2,000 samples on my buffer size and then I upgraded, it doesn't even solve that problem. So now I'm actually in a funny position where I'm like, oh, maybe I would move to Ableton because I know it's gonna perform way better and that might be a mistake, but I'm motivated to make that mistake because I have this problem now. <laughs> These powerful Apple Silicon Macs have brought loads of enthusiasm to the platform, especially from creative professionals like Hoffman and Andrew, both of whom really fell for the features, design, and future of the new architecture. It's like four grand. Enough even to put their money where their mouth is. But after the hardware transition comes the hard part, which is the software transition. There are loads of great chip features like the neural engine, the media engine and countless GPU cores for developers to take advantage of, but it's going to require lots of work to do so. Larger developers like the ones who make Ableton will get there faster. In fact, we saw them in the Apple Studio announcement. But it's harder for smaller developers, like the one who makes Reason. And at a time when Apple's developer relationships are dropping towards all-time lows, this might be, for users, the biggest difficulty of this transition. Would I get one? Here's the deal. I'm saying that I love it because I didn't pay for it. 
If you don't need to upgrade, then just wait a bit. When you look at a machine that's so small and you tell yourself that it's almost $4,000, you kind of start to think, is it justifiable? Because if I can't use it in a professional environment, then where am I going to use it? Thanks for testing out this MAC address. I'll admit, this wasn't quite the conclusion I was expecting when I set out to make this video, but if you think the MacBook Pro will make your computing faster, then give this a like. And if you're curious about the Mac Studio, then subscribe. Now, in the comments, I'm curious about what apps you use that aren't quite Apple Silicon native yet, like Microsoft Teams. <laughs>